Okay, so this video is on matter and its chemical properties. So let's first talk about what an element is. I don't know if you've ever looked at a periodic table. If you haven't, I suggest you open your chemistry book or go online and search for a periodic table. And you're going to see uh, little boxes on the periodic table and those boxes contain symbols. Uh, this is an example of a symbol Fe which stands for iron and um, you're not going to have O2 but you're just going to have O on the right hand side of the periodic table which stands for oxygen. Anyway, the periodic table is built of elements and elements are the simplest forms of matter. What this means is that if you get an element you cannot break it down. This is pretty much it. There's nothing simpler than that and what chemists do is they get these elements and they start putting them together and they can actually form everything that's around you so you can form uh, cars um, pr pretty much anything with the combination of these elements okay so a compound is when you have two or more elements combined. So you get two elements, you put them together, and you have a compound. You have something being formed. So in, if you look over here, iron is one type of element, and oxygen is another type of element. If you put both of these elements together, you have a compound. Okay, let's go down here and look at this example. Okay, so look what's happening here. Here we have four molecules of iron and we're going to combine that with three molecules of oxygen and what's going to happen is that you're going to form a compound called iron oxide which is the same thing as rust. Rust is what you see on if you've ever had a bicycle and you've left it outside and then one day you decided to, rut, to, to go and ride it and you see this like it's like a reddish uh, it's like a weird color that you see on the on the on the iron. Well, th this is the compound that it is, and it's because iron reacts with oxygen. So it's not good to leave your bike outside. And this is called a chemical change. Okay, we talked about physical changes in the in the the earlier video. Um, an example of a physical change is when uh, the compound actually stays the same all throughout. But in the chemical change, you actually see um, a new compound at the end. Let me show you an example of a physical change uh, to just refresh your memory. So here we have water in its solid state, which is ice. And this little triangle up here means heat. So if we, we add heat to ice, then the ice turns into liquid water. That's what the L here stands for. Notice that uh, you have H2O on the left hand side and you have H2O on the right hand side. Okay, we, have, we haven't changed anything. The only thing that we've changed is the way that water looks like physically, but it's still water, it's still the same thing. So that's called a physical change. In the above example, uh, we, we don't have iron anymore and we don't have oxygen anymore. We have a combination of both. So this is a complete new thing and this is a chemical change when the structure is changing. Okay, let's go over here. Okay, um, if you look again at the periodic table, you're going to notice that every single element is represented by one or two letters. That's the symbol of the element. So here I gave three examples of one letter symbols. The, the letter H stands for hydrogen, the letter C stands for carbon, and the letter O stands for oxygen. Examples of two letter symbols will be helium with the symbol HE, sodium with the symbol NA, and calcium with the symbol C. A. Another thing that I want to mention is that the first letter of the element is always capitalized, always. And the second letter of the element is always lowercase. Now there are some elements that are represented by three letters, but these elements are very rare and most likely you're never going to use them in your chemistry, uh, in your chemistry course. So for simplicity, we're just going to keep it at one letter and two letters. Okay, 
let's um, here I'm gonna provide you with another example of a chemical change so here we have two molecules of hydrogen reacting with two molecules of oxygen to form water so this is how you form water water is a liquid in its uh, room temperature hydrogen on the other hand is actually a gas at room temperature and oxygen is also a gas at, t at room temperature so when we combine these two gases we get a compound called the liquid so this is a chemical change because again just by looking at the formula you see that uh, the product is not the same as what you started out with okay so let me mention that um, in chemistry uh, the things that you're going to combine to form a product these things here on the left are called the reactants and the thing that you're gonna have on the right is called the product okay so again this is an example of a chemical change now let's go down here and I'm gonna give you some more examples of chemical changes so um, these are some of the words that you're going to encounter so this is how you can tell if a chemical change is occurring or not so a key word is burning whenever you're burning something or dealing with fire that's most likely a chemical change for sure so if you're burning a piece of paper the paper is going to turn into ash ash is not the same thing as paper these are two different uh, compounds so burning paper is actually a chemical change just like uh, when you burn a uh, a dead person when you cremate them they turn into ash so that's an example of a chemical change because ash is not the same thing as a person these are the chemistry is different uh, rust is I already mentioned it in the above example so if you leave your bike outside rust forms that's an example of a chemical change um, beware of things that have to do with color whenever you see changes in color that could be a chemical change so for instance in the summer you may see green leaves on the trees and then in the in in the fall you may see the the leaves change to like a, a reddish orange color that is a chemical change and it has to do with the pigmentation on the leaves pigment is just what gives it the, the green color and the red color okay so another one is odor if something smells bad like rotten eggs it's probably because a chemical change happened and you don't want to eat rotten eggs this is this is not good it's not the same thing as a regular uh, good egg so that's another one um, whenever you see bubbles that's another example of a chemical change so when you uh, when you feel bad in your stomach you take an antacid to to help you out and when you place the antacid in water you're gonna see bubbles forming that's an example of a chemical change another example is a formation of a solid so whenever you have two liquids reacting and you see a solid uh, that's also a chemical change this uh, this one you won't really see a lot unless you're actually in a chemistry lab uh, and another name for the, the formation of a solid is called a precipitate so this is usually when you're dealing with acids and bases and you have two liquids you mix them you actually get a solid inside of the liquid that just appears so this is a chemical change okay whenever you have energy being released or absorbed that's a chemical change uh, this an example would be baking so let's say I want to make a cheesecake and um, you know the I, I place the cheesecake inside the oven and when I take the cheesecake out it's no longer um, the way that it doesn't look the same as when I put it in now it's all nice and it actually smells good and I can actually eat it so uh, baking is an example of energy being uh, absorbed um, and this is a chemical change and another thing that you should uh, clearly see with chemical changes is that they are not easily reversible unlike physical changes which are reversible so for instance if I have an ice cube and I put a I put some heat on it the ice cube turns into liquid water but I can reverse that because I can easily put the water in the freezer and that water can turn back into an ice cube so those are physical changes but in chemical change the reversibility is not that easy 
So if I burn a piece of paper, I can't just get the, the ash and turn it back into a paper. That's actually very difficult to do. Okay, and the last thing that we're going to talk about in this section deals with the law of conservation of matter and all this is is that matter cannot be created or destroyed so if I wanted to make myself a smoothie and I put two bananas in the blender um, and I'm, I'm, I finish making the smoothie when I open it although the bananas are all blended I should have the same amount of mass if I were to weigh the, the, the smoothie before I blended it and after I put it in the blender so that's what it means. So uh, matter cannot be created or destroyed.